in the lower section. Alternates can sit in the delegate spots only if they are replacing a delegate who can't be in the seat. All the rest of the alternates need to be in the back section. Especially important for this next part of our process. Thank you.
that are helping for the afternoon session. But we really appreciate all their help. They've done great work. And Brian helped coordinate them and get them everywhere they needed to go. And they've just been a huge help. Anything they were asked to do, they've done. So we're going to let them introduce themselves. I just want to say how proud I am of them. They, these represent all the rest of them. They've handed out things to you here. They've done things behind the scene of being ushers and things like that. And uh, they've really stepped up and did a great job, don't you think? to this process, so appreciate that. I'm JC Blair from Twin Falls. I'm Andre Dixon from Twin Falls. I'm Kristen Johns from Kimberly. I'm Emily Dixon from Twin Falls. Katie McGonnell from Kimberly. And I'm Tanner Beamer from Kimberly. Thank you. Thanks, Mel. Thanks, Brian. I want to again, uh, particularly for those of us that weren't able to, to uh, go last night or maybe weren't uh, all with it last night to hear some announcements. Um, we had a great night and uh, a great dinner, a great celebration of the party. And I wanted to again thank our sponsors uh, who put out some significant cash flow to make that event happen. Um, please thank them again, Roy Nielsen, Ray Nielsen, Kaufman Farms, and Idaho Land Fund. Thank you very much for all of them. The winner of the Fair Tax Booth Raffle, books and such, I think, uh, Chris Best from Nampa. Congratulations. The Idaho Federation of Republican Women would like to welcome you to their annual meeting. Is that right? Yes. Annual convention. And that will be at beautiful Shore Lodge in McCall, September 6th through 8th. It is $100 to register for that. It includes meals, a lake cruise, um, and uh, some great gift bags. Uh, that's going to be hosted by the Valley County Republican Women. And Maureen Hatfield can provide more information as well as Dory Knight. And there is information on the back table uh, on the way out. Please grab some of that information and please put on your calendar September 6th through 8th for Idaho Federation of Republican Women. And the breakfast was great this morning. <laughs> is Chris Murray here? All right, with that, the next order of business, did I forget any announcements? The next order of business is the election of the officers of the Idaho Republican Party in the following order. Chairman, First Vice Chairman, Treasurer, Secretary, National Committee Woman, National Committee Man, Second Vice Chairman. The nominating process is as follows, and we will do chairman first. Counties shall make nominations for all offices of the party and convention upon a roll in alphabetical order. So we'll go A to county, etc., and we do have the list. Followed by a roll call of legislative districts in numerical order. Any, pay attention to this chairman if you're not familiar with the process. Any county or legislative district may A, nominate not more than one candidate to each office, or two, yield to another county or legislative district for the purpose of making a nomination. It shall not thereafter nominate a candidate for that particular office. Or if you don't want to, do anything you can pass. In all elections of convention officers and state Republican Party officers, a majority of the votes cast on the proposition the candidate shall be required the election of state Republican Party officers shall be carried out by secret ballot except in uncontested cases. So when we get through the nominating process, and we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, the staff will be making the ballots available to the chairman. Chairman, you'll be given a number of ballots equal to your number of delegates, and you can pass those out to your delegates 
and alternates that are seated properly that are present. If you've got 57 votes, 57 delegates, and only 52 of them are here, you can only give out those 52 ballots, okay? And then we will collect those ballots from you. You, as the chairman, collect them from your, your delegation. In the balloting, a candidate must receive a majority of the votes cast before he or she shall be deemed elected. If no candidate receives a majority on the first ballot, the candidate receiving the least number of votes on said ballot shall be dropped from the subsequent ballot. This procedure and the balloting shall continue until a candidate shall have a majority of the votes cast for such office, at which time balloting for such office shall cease. So, the way we'll do this, chairman's first, We'll start with Ada County, we'll ask who they nominate, if any, anyone, and we'll go through the counties and the legislative districts. When we've gone through all the counties and all the legislative districts, the nominations will close. If there's an earlier motion to suspend the rules and stop the nominating process, we can deal with that. But that's the way it works, we go through all of them. When we have those nominations, then we will have, in the order they were nominated, nominating and seconding speeches. This is a part where we need help from you because it's not set forth in the rules, the procedure. Traditionally, what has been done, candidate A and candidate B are nominated for chairman, and then candidate A will have a nominating speech not to exceed three minutes, a seconding speech not to exceed one minute, and another seconding speech not to exceed one minute. You don't have to do all of those. Highly recommend you do at least two. Um, and then we go to candidate B, same thing. There are no candidate speeches, just the nominating and seconding speeches. So I would need either a motion or a unanimous consent request to adopt that procedure for the uh, nominating process. We've got a motion here, Mr. Duvall, and a second over there. So the motion is for each candidate, this will be for all the offices, to have, in the contested races at least, to have a, a three minute nominating speech and then one minute seconding speech and another one minute seconding speech if you'd like. Yes, Mr. Hargett. Mr. Suggestion has been to amend the motion. Is that a motion? There has been a motion to amend the main motion in a second to allow the nominees to speak for all the offices a brief speech of two minutes after the conclusion of the nominating and seconding speeches in the order that they're nominated. Okay, you've heard that motion. Do you want to speak to your motion or do we just vote? Yeah, this is just for contested races. Okay, we're going to vote on whether to uh, adopt the amended motion which would be to have the three minute nominating speech the two seconding speeches in one minute and a candidate speech not to exceed two minutes in the contested races. That's the motion in front of you. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Okay, the ayes have it. So we'll now vote on, we don't need to vote on the main motion now, do we? All right, so that's the procedure we're going to follow. So we're going to start with nomination of candidates for chairman. And you probably need to come help me do that. Yes. We need to pass the main motion. Do we need to pass the main motion still? Yes. Okay, we do. So the main motion is, as amended now, uh, that there be nominating speeches of two minutes, of three minutes each, second speeches one minute, another second speech if you want of one minute, and then a candidate speech of two minutes for all the contested offices. All in favor of that main motion as amended, say aye. Aye. And all those opposed. Thank you, Bart. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and do this. For the office of chairman of the Idaho Republican Party, nominating, nominations are open. We'll begin with Ada County. Ada County, do you have a nomination? Ada County passes. Adams County, do you have a nomination? Adams County nominates Barry Peters. Bannock County. Pass. Bear Lake. Benoa. Bingham. B. 
Bingham County nominates Dan DeMordod for chairman. Blaine County. Okay, we don't need seconds. We have the nomination. So if you don't have a nomination beyond what's already been nominated, please pass. Thank you. Uh, that brings us to Boise County. There is a motion that nomination cease and a second over here. Just no debate on that. Do we need a second on the other nomination? No, we don't by rule, so okay. All right, so all those in favor of ceasing nominations for chairman, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Yeah! <laughs> uh, ayes have it. 